Welcome to episode eight, Disproving Flat Earth with International Flights. If you haven't watched this 10-part series, go back to number one and you'll see all these 10 points and how I cover them and give you common sense examples and what we can see with our own eyes to disprove this crazy thought that our earth is flat. So let's jump into international flights. This is so easily provable on a spherical earth versus flat earth to prove that our earth is a sphere and not flat, just using international flights. So you can go to kayak.com and let's look at two examples of round the world flights. One in red around the Northern hemisphere, one in blue around the Southern hemisphere. Let's take a look. So here's a flight. The top half is the Northern Hemisphere round trip, and the bottom half is the Southern Hemisphere round trip. Super easy to prove. So let's look at this. In the Northern Hemisphere, we're going from Shanghai to LAX to JFK to Dubai and back to Shanghai all the way around the world. On the lower half, the Southern Hemisphere, let's go from Sydney, Australia, to Santiago, to Sao Paulo, to Johannesburg, to Sydney again, round trip around the world. Now look at the times that these flights take. In the Northern Hemisphere, each leg, you can see that the first leg is about 11, almost 12 hours, and then five hours, and then 12 and a half hours. They total about 37 hours to go around the world. The Southern Hemisphere, you got an almost 13 hour, a three and a half hour, roughly uh, almost nine hour. They total 37 hours. So the Northern Hemisphere flight around the world, Southern Hemisphere flight around the world, 37 hours each. Super easy to prove on a spherical earth using actual international flights on kayak.com. So what would these flights look like on a flat earth? Well, the short answer is comical. So you see on the flat earth model, the red round the world flight is shown and the blue round the world flight is shown. You see it right here on this flat earth. Clearly, the southern hemisphere flights are longer and would take longer. There's more miles, more time on that flight on a flat earth. These are actual cities, actual flights, actual points going around the world on a flat earth. Let's look. So the top northern hemisphere, we said it took 37 hours. The bottom southern hemisphere around the world trip took 37 hours. How is that possible on a flat earth looking at this? The southern hemisphere flight around the world should be at least two or three times longer than the northern hemisphere on a flat earth. Let's attach some actual miles to what these flights are. The Northern Hemisphere actual flights, you see the mileage there from Shanghai to LA is about 6,500 miles, all the way to Dubai back to Shanghai is about 4,000 miles. The total mileage of the trip, and you can use Google Maps to prove this. It's not some hocus pocus, just make it up. These are actual mileage distances between these cities. The top half round the world trip is about 19,800 miles. The bottom round the world trip from city to city is about 20,000. So roughly they're identical in length, in mileage, in actual travel distances between these cities. You look at the flat earth map, look at the red lines, look at the blue lines. There's no way the red lines equal almost 20,000 miles and the outside blue lines almost equal 20,000 miles. That's impossible and ridiculous. So when you see these examples of flat earthers talking about international flights and where they go, most times flights are diverted because of traffic. They want to pick up and drop off more people. So they'll take this weird route to go to a city to drop off and pick up more people because airlines make money with butts in seats. If you don't have enough butts in the seat, you need to go somewhere else to pick up some more butts to sell tickets to make the flight worthwhile and make it profitable for the company. That's why flat earthers will pick these random flights that go to these odd cities on their route, and then they'll show it on a flat earth, which seems to make sense. 
but it's only happening because they're trying to fill the seats up and they need to go to popular cities to do so. But look at this one. Look at kayak.com. Look at Google Maps. Challenge what exactly I just showed you on this flat earth versus the spherical earth. And you'll see that there's no way these international flights make sense on a flat earth. So let's talk about international flights maintaining their altitude. They don't measure the distance between the plane and the surface of the earth, because if they did, the plane would constantly be going up and down, up and down, chasing the terrain of the earth, going over mountains, going over terrains, going over valleys and canyons. It would constantly be chasing that distance. But it doesn't do that. It measures air pressure. We know on a spherical heliocentric model that the higher you go into the atmosphere from Earth, the less air pressure there is. I've got two personal friends who are international pilots, and they told me that barometric altimeters are how they maintain altitude in their international jets. And it's automatic. They just set the controls and it happens because we know from the surface of the earth, the air atmosphere is less the higher you go. So if it wants to be at a certain footage above the earth, it measures the pressure of the air at that point and the plane maintains in that zone of air pressure. It can dip down or go up depending on the air pressure away from the surface of the earth. So with air pressure being higher right at the surface of Earth and lower above it kind of proves that we're not in an enclosed system, because if we were, the air would balance out and it would be the same pressure no matter how high you were in that snow globe that flat earthers say that we live in. But since gravity pulls the air down, it's denser, closer to the surface of Earth, and the further away you get from Earth, the less gravity pull that there is, the air pressure becomes lighter. That's the way international flights work with these measurement tools. The barometric altimeter measures air pressure, and it knows exactly how far away from the surface of the Earth it is by the pressure in the air. So just net net, here's the fact. Altimeters determine altitude by measuring air pressure. Air pressure decreases the further it is measured from the surface of the Earth. As an international flight rounds our spherical Earth, the altimeter signals to adjust the nose down to maintain a constant distance around the curve. It adjusts the plane's nose down about one degree every 90 miles as it circles the Earth. So let's look at this in a closed flat Earth with a dome, the firmament over the top of flat Earth. The air pressure would be the same in the whole thing. The air pressure would not be denser the closer to the surface and less pressure the higher you go if it's an enclosed system. And they talk about the firmament being so solid and unbreakable in this cast iron dome over the top of Earth. If that were the case, the air pressure would be the same all over. So you need to tell all the international flights that their barometric altimeter just doesn't work in a flat earth because the air pressure would not change in an enclosed system. So game over for flat earthers using examples from an international flight.